everyone, it's me, Shrevy the Great, always letting you know if you should shelve it or trash it. Now, after a few month delay and years of begging for some sort of sign, Spyro has finally returned. Aha! Everyone else says Spyro is back, but I'm better than them. I'm different. You saw it! Piece of shit. Spyro Reignited Trilogy is finally here. Now, while everyone else was gearing up for the new Call of Duty, or Red Dead 2, or even for the new Pokemon game, I was eagerly waiting for Spyro, and it warmed my heart to see so many people excited for Spyro. Now, if I'm being honest, I didn't really think this game would do well. I don't know what it was, but I just had this fear that it just wasn't going to sell all that well. But here we are, with Spyro at the top of the UK charts, and that's fantastic. I have been eagerly following this game's development for what feels like forever. Whenever it got delayed, I can't tell you how bummed out I was. I mean, I was thankful that it was getting more time in the oven, but come on, it's Spyro. And not only did I get the game, but I befriended some awesome people along the way. Stop calling me. Man, you really gotta stop calling me at the worst times. Can't you see I'm trying to have my daily prayer session to the almighty HD Spyro? You can't interrupt that. It's very important. If not, we'll never get another Spyro game ever again! So for this video, I'm not going to be reviewing each game. I've already covered each individual game on this channel. In fact, Spyro 1 was the first video on this channel. Instead, I want to do what I did with Insane Trilogy, just a bit more organized. What does it do well? What could have improved? Stuff like that. Now, I'm going to be very open in this review. As many of you know, Spyro is my favorite series ever, and I'm not going to let nostalgia blind me from giving this a fair review. The game does have problems, and I'll be sure to address them. So let's start with the obvious change, visuals. The game is running off the Unreal Engine 4 and good god damn is it pretty. I honestly started tearing up when I loaded this up for the first time. To see my favorite series ever finally being handled with proper care, looking so good. I ended up just stopping and viewing each world before I hopped in and started collecting. Everything about this collection just has such a great level of detail. I love how when you breathe fire it leaves burn marks on the grass around you, and it even casts real time shadows which is super cool to see. The trees have leaves and light shafts around them, the water is nice and reflective on every surface, metal looks like it has some sort of real-time reflection, every level has its own atmosphere, and even though it's been remade from the ground up, it still has that Spyro charm and aesthetic. I don't know what it is, but the visuals in Spyro games are very unique and I love that they were kept properly for the HD treatment. Spyro's model looks so damn good. I will say though, when I first saw it in the reveal trailer at this angle, that was a little iffy. He just looked kind of goofy. But after seeing it more in action, I fell in love. You gotta understand, I've followed Spyro my entire life, and having this and this as the only two HD models of Spyro, I really didn't know what to expect. I was excited to see the classic style in HD, but cautious because I had no frame of reference. Crash's reveal was to be expected, his design isn't as complex as Spyro, just a furry orange blob with jeans. But so much was added to Spyro's model that I never even thought to add on. I love the chest plate design and the way it angles. I love how bold and thick his horns are. The spots on his head and on his back look great. And it's not just the model. The animations are so smooth. Every bouncy movement, every cat-like jump, and just about all of the cutscenes are so fun to watch. That goes for a lot of the redesigns as well. First off, I love Sheila's new design, fuck you. Sergeant Bird is ridiculously adorable. Bentley looks... Alright, I mean, he's a yeti, nothing too crazy. Agent 9 still looks roughly the same, Bianca still looks as cute as ever, though not really digging her stiff sleeve tubes. Really, Toys for Bob did a pretty damn good job making almost everyone look great. Now, a couple of reveals needed a second take for me to get used to. For example, when I first saw Elora, I wasn't immediately in love like the rest of the internet. She seemed a lot more slimmed down and kind of long, if that makes any sense. I'm used to the old basic colored PS1 model where she was kind of wider, but I mean, I got used to it and she's one of my favorites. Hunter, I don't know. I'm indifferent about Hunter's design. It's a shame that we didn't get his old voice back. Not really a fan of the whole Sonic the Hedgehog delivery. Wow, you're a pretty good athlete. If I hadn't lost my running shoes, I'd take you on for real. For now, here's an orb for your collection. Wow, you're a pretty good athlete. If I hadn't lost my running shoes, I'd take you on for real. For now, here's an orb for your collection.
It also bugged me that they made the bow and arrow a permanent part of his design. I understand that's what other companies did, like after a hero's tale, he just became an archer. But it doesn't make sense for the classic games. Yes, he uses it in Spyro 2, once, just once, not once more in this entire trilogy, and that's why it bothers me. There's really no reason to make this a defining characteristic if they can't expand upon that characteristic. It's like changing Bentley's design to be a boxer for the whole game just because there's a boxing minigame. But for the other games, I adored all of the dragon redesigns in Spyro 1. All of them have so much personality. It kind of makes me sad that these designs are so good and full of character because they're only used for a few seconds. I'd love to see more of all of them. I mean, this guy's my goddamn spirit animal. Same goes for all the NPCs in Spyro 2 and 3. Even though some of them kind of missed the joke after the HD treatment, most of them still look great. I think the only redesign I'm still having trouble getting used to is Sparks. I don't know, sometimes he looks pretty cute. He'll wave at you when you haven't done anything for a while, give you a thumbs up for collecting all the gems, but sometimes he just looks so... gross. I think it's just that he's so oddly shaped yet so detailed. I was pretty happy with a Hero's Tales design of Sparks. Just make him voiced by David Spade again and we'll be golden. <laughs> The controls, for the most part, have been kept the same, for Spyro at least. They did end up giving you the role in all three games, which, by the way, is super useful now. In the original game, it just kind of felt slow and useless. Reignited gives it a quick animation that I actually use for a lot of encounters. They also did something so simple like map the fire button to R2 that, at first, was kind of weird, but it just started to feel like second nature the more I used it. Now, it's not only R2, you can still press circle, but it's weird how I found myself using it more than the original original button. Spyro does feel like he has a nice weight to him like in the originals, but I hate that the glide is so off. It has the Spyro 1 problem where whenever you start a glide it kind of pushes you down a little bit from your starting point, but only sometimes. It's really odd. Sometimes if you don't push forward on the stick, you won't be pushed down, but if you do push forward, he will. I still haven't really figured it out. I found myself missing a lot of glides that felt unfair, but other than the glide problem, everything else is here and feels great. The charging also feels amazing. It's got this new weight to it that makes you feel every impact, though the jumping still feels off when charging. I don't know, it's got the same problem as the gliding where it feels like I unfairly miss some jumps. And for some reason, flaming while charging feels kinda sluggish. This made a lot of egg thief chases last longer than they needed to be. While we're on the topic of charging, I love and hate the way supercharge is handled. I love the idea of having to build up speed instead of going Mach 5 instantly. It's cool to see the flames change color as you get faster, it makes you feel more badass. But I hate how it's the only way to use supercharge. For the speedway levels, it was also fun to just instantly go fast to keep the flow of the level going, but now it just slows you down more and wastes your time. I barely used it in the speedway levels, which is a shame because it was always super fun to use. And while we're in the speedway levels, the flying feels really good. Sometimes. You noticing a pattern here? I love the sense of speed you get paired with the amazingly smooth animations, but I hate how every time you go through a speed booster you start drifting for whatever reason. This made a lot of races way more difficult than they needed to be, but it was just a minor inconvenience that didn't make it impossible to play or anything. Something else I really appreciated is how the level's loading is handled. First off, moving and interacting with the loading screen is such an adorable addition. As for the loading, in Spyro 3 for example, every mini portal that leads to an additional egg challenge or one of the other unlockable characters, loads immediately because once you step through that portal, everything regarding that level is loaded right then and there, helping the pace of the game by a lot. On the subject of the mini portals, let me say this. I'm glad they fixed the skateboarding, but it still needs more fixing. If you don't know what I'm referring to, before Reignited was released, I believe it was IGN or someone else who uploaded footage of the Lizard mission from Spyro 3. This was our first look at the skateboarding, and for some ungodly reason, jumping off of the ramp pushed you forward instead of pushing you up. And throughout the video, the person playing the level just could not finish the challenge because he couldn't jump to the roof. The video ended up cutting to the part where he finished, I assume because he spent so long trying to get up there. But for the actual game, they did end up fixing the issue by giving you more height. 
but it's far from perfect. For some reason, the skateboard acts as if it has its own properties when in motion. I was able to get it to skate on the wall multiple times. I can only imagine what someone can do if they perfect this. Not only that, but doing tricks feels like it's fighting with the physics engine. I can feel it trying to give you momentum as you flip around, but at the same time it's trying to snap you back or straighten you out as you go. It's very jarring when you play with it, but still a lot of fun because of it. Now let's talk about those other characters. Starting off with Sheila, she feels a bit faster and easier to control. The big thing I noticed was how fast her kick is now. In the original, it had this weird wind up to it before actually landing, and trying to aim it while kicking felt sloppy. Here it moves very tightly and keeps the flow going. The only thing I really felt was kinda awkward sometimes was the high jump. Nothing terrible, just kinda janky sometimes. Sergeant Bird feels a lot looser and easier to handle. Flying is so much better to control and his missiles home in on enemies a lot better. Sometimes they hit things I didn't even see. Every now and then the camera will give you some trouble when flying, but it's nothing terrible. Also, I know I said this already, but good god he's adorable. I actually had a lot of fun playing as him this time around. Bentley is... A little better? So first off, yes, he's way better to play, but I don't know if that makes him fun or not. So they fixed a lot of problems. He does move a bit faster, and it looks like he can jump actually a bit higher. So overall, he's more robust and agile. The camera was put as an over-the-shoulder view, which I understand. Instead of having this large character take up a huge chunk of the screen, you put him on the side so we can see more of the level. And he's on the right side instead of the left side because he's holding that giant club in his right hand. It makes sense and it didn't bother me playing. In fact, it helped me out more having him on that side. The problem is that his levels still remain very short and painfully easy. There isn't really anything memorable in here besides what was fixed. Yeti boxing is still here and it's still as easy as ever, so there's that. Now, Agent 9? Oh my god, Agent 9. Agent fucking 9 is so much better. The fire button being mapped to R2 really comes in handy here. He controls like an actual third person shooter now. He's so much faster, so much more agile, way easier to control, and most importantly, fun. Coming into this remake, I was really looking forward to seeing how they handled him, and now I can say I'd actually like to see an Agent 9 game. Even that first person segment in Fireworks Factory felt so much better better than the original. I can't really put into words how much better this is. You'd have to have grown up with the originals to get how big of a deal this is to me. Given this new control style, I really wish there were more enemies in his levels. I just wanted to keep shooting, so I'll stop gushing over him for now, but my god. And for the last playable character, Sparks. It's the fucking same. Like, there's really not much to fix here. His levels are already pretty alright, fun, but nothing amazing. But outside of his levels, I think something might be wrong with Sparks. I'm not sure if this was intentional or if it was a bug, <laughs> but sometimes Sparks just won't fucking do his job. His job being picking up gems. Every now and then, Sparks will just completely ignore the gem that is directly in front of you. Or, if you're flying, he'll just ignore every gem that you pass unless you land. I'm not sure what the deal is, but it breaks the pace pretty hard. Like, if you click the left analog stick, he'll point to any gem that you missed in any level. And even when pointing to the gem, he just still won't get it. Sparrow, Sparrow, it's right there, right here, Sparrow, right here, right here, Sparrow, it's right here, right here, it's right fucking here, Sparrow, right here, you god st stupid fucker, it's right here, Sparrow, Sparrow, get it, you fucking piece of shit, god, I got it, don't worry, it's cool, I got it, it's fine. Dude, they showed me look at my wallet, I have yeah. no idea where I put it. It's a problem. Alright, I'm gonna look over here, you just find somewhere to look, and if you find anything, just let me know.
dude, 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 your wallet, dude, dude, found it, dude, dude, it's over here, hey, hey, it's over here, hey, dude, dude, I found your wallet, dude, 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 hey, hey, no, I got it, here, here, found it. Speaking of pointing to gems, that's something that kind of bothered me. See, in the originals, the reason you play the Sparks levels is because after you get the egg, some of the magic rubs off on Sparks and he gains a new ability. For example, pointing to gems you've missed or being able to warp to any level, making backtracking easier. But in Reignited, you're just given these abilities from the get-go in all three games. See, I love that they added those two specific abilities to all games because backtracking in Spiral 1 was a fucking nightmare. These abilities in Spiral 1 are a godsend, but it's also very jarring that in Spiral 3, your mindset going into these levels is that you'll gain a new ability, but you just don't. It's even weirder that you do get a new ability in some of the levels. Zoe will mention it after like the third level I think and it just comes out of nowhere. And by then some of the extra abilities you do end up getting feel kind of useless. Especially if they're the last few levels you do in Spyro 3, which they probably will be. Now let's talk about some boss fights. They're all basically the same as the original, with a few actually being a bit harder, which is nice. I would have hated to come into this game without having some sort of challenge. I mean, Spiral 1's bosses still aren't even bosses. They're really just big enemies that take about three hits. Still pathetic, but hey, they look fun. Spyro 2's bosses have a bit more challenge to them. Still look like they did back then. Ripto even looks more menacing, but his voice is just... angry? It kind of sounds like he's just yelling all the time. Even when he's talking softly, it's just loud. But his boss fight was still pretty fun. Spyro 3's bosses are still some of my favorites. Kind of sucks that the third boss fight doesn't look so menacing anymore. Looks really goofy, and that's a shame. The sorceress... I don't really know what happened here. In the original, she was actually hateable for being such a bad person. She had bad motives and treated everyone like shit. Reignited sorceress just sounds like... A bitch? I don't really know how else to explain it other than just being bitchy. We managed to capture the eggs, your highness. Every last one. Excellent. Maybe you will amount to something after all. Now, go guard the tunnels. Stop anyone from coming through. We managed to capture the eggs, your highness. Every last one. Excellent! Maybe you will amount to something after all. Now go guard the tunnels! Stop anyone from coming through! See what I mean? There's no hate or character in this delivery. Very one note, but overall, I still enjoy the boss fights in the game. Oh yeah, that happened. So, one thing I should bring up is that this game is pretty glitchy. Like, oh my god. But it's weird, because these glitches aren't something everyone will encounter and break the game or anything. Just glitches that you can easily find and cause interesting results. Along with Spike basically hitting me three times in less than two seconds, I also encountered this odd death glitch in Spiral 1 where I couldn't interact with anything. The balloonist didn't even spawn. I also was the one who discovered the spinning loading screen glitch, which I posted on Twitter, and it actually got pretty popular. Let's see, got some weird collision here. Um, sprouting water pandas, frozen in place, uh, exercising hippo, uh, got double spyro in this section, peekaboo rock, uh, found a way to get rid of the water filter, got some weird dialogue trigger bug, this stupid disappearing base killed me because it didn't put me on the ground. I don't know what the fuck's going on with this whale. Has anyone else gotten this problem? I've entered this whale at so many different angles, but the outcome is always the same. Uh, anyways, uh, this model started doing a Fortnite dance for some reason. I guess I just got a bad copy of the game. Uh, the skateboard, like I said, can do fuck all, I don't even know. Sparks exists. I think the most interesting glitch that I found is that I can climb past the barrier in Zephyr, and as soon as I started exploring, I get hit with a missile and fall. For some reason, there's no death plane out in this level, so I just decided to let myself fall. And after a good while, Spyro just disappeared. Whenever I paused the game and exited the level, Everything disappeared. I was able to get everything back by warping back to Zephyr. Now, while all these glitches can be seen as a negative thing, I found it to make the game even more fun. See, I love glitches. They really spice up a game for me in a lot of ways. I grew up breaking Spyro 2 and 3 apart for years and years. On my old, old channel, I even discovered a glitch in Spyro 2 that no one else has ever found or recreated. So I know my Spyro glitches. So it was really fun for me to discover 
new ways to break my favorite series ever. So before we decide this game's fate, let me answer one important question. Is this the definitive way to play Spyro? Well, completely unbiased. I would have to say no, solely because I think there's something that the original games offer that you can't get with the remake, and that's the authentic charm. The originals have a lot of problems, don't get me wrong, but I would say at least try those first before trying Reignited. Well, as for someone who has never played a Spyro game and just wants to jump on in, by all means get Reignited. Hell, for someone who just wants a good game in general, I cannot recommend this game enough. So much love and care has been put into this package. But there's still one more question we have to ask. What should you do? Shelf it or trash it? I think we all know this game deserves nothing more than top shelf. What are you still doing here? Shoo, go. Oh, you.